You are not ready for today's video. I am sitting down with Megan, who is a data scientist and developer advocate, to hear about her journey from starting out in finance, pivoting into data science, and then as well, moving into a developer advocate role that focuses on data science. Megan is someone who always shares amazing career advice, tips, and tricks that are really, really useful. You know, sometimes you watch people's videos and you're like, I didn't really learn anything from that video. For hers, I always learn something, even as someone who's worked in tech for many years. I hope you enjoy this conversation between myself and Megan. I linked all her socials down below, so make sure to go check her out or leave any questions you have for her and I in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. All right, let's get into it, starting with how she pivoted from finance to data science. That pivot process took me four or five months of figuring out, first figuring out what even I wanted to do outside of finance because my entire identity was wrapped up in finance since I went to school for it and it was the only job I ever had. So I, think I had to think back to experiences and skills and strengths that I had. And I thought back to literally just one college course I took related to data analytics. And at the time I had taken that course my last year of college, not thinking that it was anything except for a requirement that I needed to check off to graduate. And I was like, wait, I really enjoyed that class. Like, I guess I know a little bit about data analytics. I guess I have no other routes that I'm considering. I have somewhat of an advantage because I had two years of being a financial analyst. And so it was like, I had one foot in both doors, but I realized that approach was not benefiting me because my messaging was coming across not clearly to recruiters and how my resume was presented, right? But there was one day where it clicked in my head that I had to overhaul my entire resume and how I presented myself to recruiters because I needed to stop waffling between those two things. I need to tailor my job search to the job that I want and not the job that I have, which is what I tell like mentees all the time. Having that clarity benefited me so much because from then on the interview started rolling in because I was able to simplify my resume and how I talked about myself so much because I just had that clarity. And so that took four or five months, lots of interviews and a lot of learning along the way where I was like, oh, okay, this is what data, analy data analytics roles ask for in interviews. This is what they look for in my resume, figuring it out from interview to interview, application to application. What is some advice you'd have for others who are listening and say they're feeling that way, where they're nervous to take that leap and tailoring their resume? A lot of times people think, oh, I've never held a job in this field, so I can't say that I know anything about this career. And that's not true. Your resume is literally what you make of it. I'm not allowed to say that. When your resume, you should think of it as an asset that will present you to recruiters in the best light possible. So it is in your best interest to think outside of the box, not lie, but think outside of the box to curate it in a way that shows you in the best possible light to people who are looking for data analysts or whatever roles. And so for me, it was like I had done a couple of school projects, a couple of volunteer positions that I was able to add into my resume that previously before I had that aha moment, I was like, oh, I couldn't, I can't add these things. Like I'm not it's not really considered real experience. But then once I started to add that into my resume, the recruiter started noticing. Just think outside of the box and be creative without lying. It's so important to really harness that advice you just shared because recruiters, they look at your resume, they have hundreds of resumes, especially now that they're looking at. So being able to be very clear and define what you are looking for. Okay, so from data analyst to data scientist, what did that transition? My first role of being a data analyst I learned pretty much all of the data skills that I have today from that role. That data analyst role was so pivotal for my career path because I got so much on the job training. They invested in our taking courses, getting certifications and just learning on the job, which was so different from learning on your own through side projects, right? If you are able to apply skills for your target career or target role to your actual job on a day-to-day -day basis, which was what I was able to do as a data analyst, because there were data science projects that I was able to take on. I was working in a consulting firm. I was a data analyst 
on a team that was made up of consultants. I had the chance to apply my skills to multiple projects at a given time, which at the time was hell because I had to juggle a lot of different projects, but it was super beneficial because I was able to apply my data analytics and data science skills to a lot of different domains because we had so many different clients. And I, at the time, uh, when I had turned on my open to work settings on LinkedIn, that same day, I had also coincidentally made a really viral LinkedIn post. It was like, if I reply to you in all caps, I'm not mad at you. I'm just multitasking in SQL, which LinkedIn loves a good SQL joke um, <laughs> it went because I had turned on my open to work settings. And also that post got me in front of so many different hiring managers and recruiters. That same day, I had five or six hiring managers reach out to me, including my future manager at a data startup who would end up hiring me three weeks later. I love that you really highlighted the work, the groundwork that goes into something like that, not only for the side of your LinkedIn post that got in front of so many recruiters, but also to the groundwork that you were building when you were doing consult or at a company, a consulting company doing yes. data analytics, but also taking a lot of those skills and recognizing, okay, some of uh, most of these I can apply to data science roles as well, laying that groundwork too. My career path has been just a pattern of me bringing transferable skills from one job to the next, and then maybe a different set of transferable skills from that, that second to the third job. What is a typical range for someone who say is just starting out or however you want to frame it for people who are looking to become a data scientist, what can they expect? Yeah, I have seen peers range from, or peer salaries range from like 100K to like maybe 150K. And I believe that at the time when I was a data scientist, I was making on the dot like the average, the US average for a data scientist salary, which I'm happy to share. At the time when I landed the job, I was making 115K and then I got a raise to make 125K by the time I left that job, which is right on that average data. I always appreciate when people are so candid because that's how we all can increase and grow our own salaries. Now switching more so into developer advocacy, it's really interesting to me. I've had a similar role being a developer advocate on the software developer side, but I find it super cool, your story with developer advocacy, leaning more so on the data analyst, data scientist, I should say, side. I had made that pivot not really by choice looking back. I, when I was a data scientist, I thought I was going to be a data scientist forever. And at the time I had noticed a lot of my LinkedIn friends were starting to become developer advocate, which was not a term that was super familiar to me as I believe it's not familiar to most people. I was then laid off as a data scientist and this was 2023 and the job market then is like today, not great. And so. At the time, I was like, okay, I want to find a different data science role, but it was crickets. I was like, what do I do? My jobs were just going nowhere. I'm unemployed. I have a house that I have to pay for. I'm really freaking out here. But at the same time, developer advocate roles were coming to me. And that was when I was like, okay, in the past, I told myself I, I would put a pin into the thought of developer advocacy as a potential route. And now's the time to take that pin off and maybe explore that because I was getting multiple um, inquiries to explore those types of roles. So started interviewing for those roles and ended up landing two offers as a developer advocate at other data startups. I ended up increasing my salary by 50%. So I was like, okay, like the market is definitely telling me that I should go <laughs> direction. It wasn't me like very intentionally trying to go that route, but just landed on my lap given my skill set, which was that. Again, I had been con consistently building up my personal branding and my thought leadership as a, a data science expert. I had started being recognized for those communication skills and the ability to build a community around technical topics, which is at the core what you need to do as a developer advocate. It's incredible doubling your salary. When I was looking for developer advocate roles, it was two years ago, around two years ago, the salaries for them were amazing, like incredible, to your point, doubling your salary. I don't know what it is now, but I have looked into, because developer advocacy is not, that role is not super well known. So you can't just yeah. go into Payscale or Indeed or like Glassdoor and find very consistent salaries. But 
there's this one company called Common Room, which is a tool that is used by a lot of developer advocates. They had released a study of developer advocates' salaries, and they had published a report in 2023 and beginning of 2024. And I think like the 2023 report said that average salary for developer advocates was like 187K. And then the next year it had increased to, I believe like 208K. The salaries in that field are so high because of that unique skill set that you have to have between soft skills and hard skills. Because if you were to think of your average data scientist or software engineer, they probably don't enjoy publishing blog posts and doing speaking engagements and being very public facing. If someone is looking to pivot into a different role, similar to yourself who has done it a few different times and done it very well, is there any kind of three tips or pointers that you would give to someone who's watching this? But consistently through each pivot and all those mistakes is talking to people who actually do it. And it can be super daunting to hop on a call like this and learn from strangers. I have learned about roles not through like Google searching or taking courses right off the bat. It's through doing field research from talking to professionals who have actually been on the ground doing the work. And so coffee chats have been a very big like secret weapon of mine because you can learn so much from talking to a stranger who is willing to help. You get to expand your network and you could gain potential mentors because I think people underestimate how willing to help strangers can be. So that's like my first tip, I would say. Second tip is to, and, and I've touched on this multiple times in this conversation, when you're in the process of learning and building projects, it would have benefits not only you, but like the people in your community to be as public. The way that I recommend people doing that is find the platforms where your potential hiring managers would likely be hanging out. That could be LinkedIn. That was for me because I think the data community on there is very vibrant. It could be on GitHub. It could be Kaggle. It could be YouTube. Find a medium. Eventually, you'll get the hang of it and, and people will start noticing. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. I think it was really insightful whether you are looking to become a data scientist, developer advocate, or just wanting to hear how everyone's journey is so unique and also doubling the salary, that's amazing. Leave in the comments other roles or individuals you want me to sit down with for more quick, compact conversations like this. Quick, compact, semi, yeah, quick and compact. And I will do my best to get them on the channel. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you all soon.